For general imaging and image optimization uh, controls, we'll just get started here. We'll start by adding a patient by clicking our new patient button here. Now note it starts on last name. Your machine may be different uh, depending on your software level, but you would just type in the last name and you can tab and it'll go back to, up to the first name. And um, just put a quick name in. And you can tab through these sections here. Goes to birthday, your study type, study description. If you do want something to show up on structured reports as your study type, you would type it in here. So if you're just doing a carotid, you would type that in and that would show up on that. Okay, so that's if we have a new patient. We can also go back to the archive and look for previous patients. And yours may default to a time span of one week. So if you have a previous patient for more than that, it'll just look like you have two patients here. So what you really want to do is maybe go to all one year, things you've done in the last six months or three months. So as you can see, if I hit three months, it's going to show me all the exams I've done in the last three months, and it'd be easier to find your patient that way. And then you have your ID, your name, study type, etc. But we're not going to do that right now. Okay, so you can also choose the work list here. Down along the bottom, it'll say new patient, new study, end exam, okay, and cancel. So uh, I just typed in this information here. If I go to new patient, it's going to erase that because it thinks that you're actually starting a new patient. But I actually want to add this patient. So I'm going to click OK. I'll come right back to this screen in just a moment. But I'm going to click OK, and it'll register that patient in the database. Now when I go back, I can click new patient, and it'll clear all these fields. Or if I selected that patient from the archive, I can just click, or this is during an exam, I can click new study and it'll create a new study and you can add the study description with that same patient. You can also end this exam from the patient and of course OK and cancel. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and we can get started here. All right, so once we have this patient information done, we're going to go ahead and do, choose the next item, which is selecting your probe. Uh, we'll just choose vascular and carotid. Uh, in this case, you can do custom presets, and those will show up, and we'll show that how to do that later in, the, in a later video. So in order to select it, we're just going to hit carotid and click it twice. Okay, so now we have patient information, carotid, and we're ready to go with the exam. Now in the first video, we discussed all of these keys and what they do. So in standard B mode, uh, we have our frequency here which can be adjusted by twist or by pressing down here and it'll change the frequency of the probe. You can also change the frequency down here as shown in the earlier video. You have your dynamic range by twisting it. Focal number, press down. This top row you're going to click down. Bottom row you're going to twist. So see I'm checking, changing the focal position. Compound imaging, I can turn it off and add or remove lines of sight. Q image is an image optimization where it's an automatic optimization with different settings that are programmed by Chison. Speckle reduction imaging, you'll find that on or off by default. In order to turn speckle reduction on, you're going to need to turn compound off, speckle reduction on, and then you can go back and turn on the compound imaging. So you might want to try that as an image optimization. It can make a big difference in your image with speckle reduction on or off. And if you do like it, you can always save that as a custom preset. Now here we have zoom, and this is just a simple zooming the screen, and you can change, see how the image changes. This is just that general area. You can also use this zoom down here, and this zoom will give you a region of interest box. And you can scroll that around and find the place that you want. You'll click enter, and this is going to show you where exactly you're zooming, and you can move this around to different parts of the anatomy to change your zoom box. Okay, I'm going to get out of that, but one more thing with that. If I click this zoom box, I can also use the update key, change the size of the zoom box, click again, press the magnifying glass, and now I'm zooming in on that area. Some other items for image optimization uh, where you would start normally with the frequency, dynamic range, uh, compound imaging, etc. Uh, this uh, harmonics, you can turn that on and off, and that will make a fairly large difference in your image, either good or bad, but when you change the frequency it'll automa it, it can automatically select and deselect harmonics and fundamental frequencies as well. This X contrast, when you press it, you'll see how it goes from enhance to suppress and normal, and 
Those can make a pretty good difference in the resolution of your image too. I highly re recommend trying that, see how it affects your image. As it is with all these image optimizations, anytime you're scanning, uh, try different frequencies, see if the dynamic range changes. Uh, don't forget about focal numbers and focal zones. These focal zones will improve the image where this arrow is, moving the position. It will change the image throughout as to what you're scanning and it'll focus on where you want the best re resolution and you can add focal zones but remember each focal zone that you add will reduce your frame rate so I'm down to 23 frames per second with five focal zones so I go back to one and I'm up to 45 and each time I go 23 all the way down to 23 and then when I get back up I'm back to 45 Compound imaging also. Uh, again, try all these different ways. If you want to see a larger screen, you can click this to go to full screen view. Click it again to go back to the regular screen view. Your gain control is here. Just twist it to change the gain. If you want to try its automatic image optimization, it's actually pretty good on this machine. It will try and look at your image and, and give you the best uh, image possible as far as the gain is concerned. To freeze and save an image, you're going to freeze here. You can use this Cine scroll bar to go to a certain point in the image. Say you want to save that, just click this. This is to save a still image. This little disk button here, this one that looks like a film strip, saves a Cine loop. And if you notice how fast that is, that saved 404 frames very, very quickly, and that's pretty unique for this machine. You can save a loop prospectively or retrospectively, meaning if I unfreeze and I want to save the live image, while I'm recording, I can just hit this button and it's going to continue saving. And you can choose a certain length in the beginning or you just hit start and stop. And it will save that loop. And those loops are indicated by like a little film canister right there. So you know which ones are loops and which ones are not. You'll see here these are stills. They do not have a little film canister. So that's just a static image. So that's this is prospective saving. And to go to retrospective saving, I'm going to freeze, and it's going to show me the last 512 frames. If I want to save everything back there, I can click here, and it's saved to the disk. You can also choose a range as shown in the previous. I can scroll to a spot, hit start position, scroll again, set end position, hit freeze, and it's only going to save those frames in that little loop there. So for cardiac vascular, whatever you want to do, when you go through, if you just want to save that little portion instead of having to scroll through that entire loop later, that's a big time saver. Uh, now, if you want to do that now, it'll save you a lot of time later. Go ahead and unfreeze. Now we discussed uh, many of these other functions in the previous video. Let's get into more 2D uh, imaging items. Uh, earlier we showed press this menu down and you get a whole new set and this set is also uh, function dependent uh, depending on which modality you're in um, you know carotid like if you're doing vascular or OBGYN these menus will change so you have up top your scan width and how you adjust this menu is you twist this menu knob and you'll see how it highlights and changes and if you want to go you can flip through here and change that. Now I just rotated the image. There is another hidden feature here. If you want to flip your image up or upside down, it's up and down arrow, left and right arrow to reverse the image side. So you can just click up, down, left, right, or just hit the same one back and forth. Okay, back to over here. My gamma, that changes the overall brightness in an image. You can turn that down or up. Noise rejection, again, this is just try to get rid of artifact. A lot of these are just image optimization. Image smoothing, line density, typically you'll want that as high. Uh, if you have a low line density, typically it's, what you're trying to do is get a high frame rate. Uh, this machine generally has really high frame rates. You probably won't need to adjust your line density unless in some mode it says low. You should try the high. Edge enhancement, acoustic power. Trapezoidal mode, if you turn that on. You can see how trapezoidal mode gives your image a trapezoid. Let's scroll back down. On and off. So you can get a wider angle deeper in the image. Super needle. Now, this should be corrected in a later version. 
but this super needle is kind of set up more like a biopsy guideline. So this marker up here refers to this probe marker over here. So generally when you're doing needle injections, you would bring the needle down along here. Now this is saying that that's how it should go. This will not help you with needle guided injections. What you need to do if it starts at this negative 30, you'll want to immediately change that to, it, unless you're coming through the needle on this side, you want the needle to come perpendicular to this dotted line. So you would bring the needle down this way and that's going to give you the needle visualization. If you do not have it going that way and have it to that negative 30, the only way you're gonna see the needle is to go this way. If it goes here, you might as well not have needle visualization at all. It's not gonna work for you. So when you use it, make sure that you go back to that 30 degrees if you're planning on using this marker for that side of the probe. Put it down again. Blastography is going to show you the elasticity in the, in the tissue there. And you have your scale here. It says exit, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit. Real-time panoramic, you're going to select that, and you can just go right across and scan, and it'll put it back together for you. Freeze. Exit. I'm going to go back to menu here. Dual B. Okay, this shows if I'm going to do this 2D, this 2B mode, if I select dual B up and down each time I click to save it it's going to be top bottom or left right okay go back to that and notice if I I'm, I'm scrolling down I can also scroll up and it'll go back to the bottom so some of these are grayed out. They're things that would change as you, depending on the mode. You can also go to this utility menu and you can skip slideshow and demo images unless you're taking it somewhere. Go ahead and click on post-processing. You can change your 2D map and your chroma color. Go ahead and click exit. Now, if we want to save a custom preset, let's say we preferred our own settings and we made settings that we prefer with a higher harmonic frequency, change our Danak range, focal position, focal numbers, compound imaging, etc. And say we really like that image, and this includes the parameters up here when you click that menu key down. To save your own custom preset, press the menu button down, go to utility, then down here, say applications, presets, edit username, etc. I want to create my own user defined, so I'm going to change this to user one down here, and I can choose one through five. But I'm going to go ahead and check user one. I'm going to click save. And then I want to save this current preset to cardiac. That is correct. And I clicked OK. So now I've got one under user one. If I want to change that name from user one to something else, I'll just type my name which is a common if multiple users are there. You can say like Brian, Brian Adult, Cardiac, or something of that sort. Click OK. So now it's there. I can load the preset to whatever. Uh, but right now, I'll just show that Pro button. OK, now notice I put in that custom name, and it doesn't have anything there. It just says User 1. Problem is, is I made a mistake and put spaces in that name. So I want to go back, click menu again, and then under utility, I'm going to click again, and it has these, and it says user one. If I enter that username again, and just type in my name, just without any spaces. Now I have it as Gil, and then when I go to this probe thing, right now it's got Gil as my own custom user preset. And next we'll get into Doppler and M-Mode imaging.